Hey guys, what's up? Today I have a makeup tutorial, but it's a little bit different from any other makeup tutorial I've done before because today I'm going to show you guys how I've been doing my makeup recently with the acne that I have on my skin. I have never in my life had acne the way two months ago I started having acne. I know that it's probably so many different factors. It's definitely hormonal because hormonal acne usually shows up like in your chin strap area. Um, I am working with a dermatologist. So I have a dermatologist who I really like, but I also have been getting treatments done, both maintenance treatments, but also skincare treatments at Meridian Medical Spa in Bonita Springs in Florida. And the estheticians there, Jenna and Kira are both great and I have some stuff that actually has made a huge difference and has really been helping and so I'll be talking about those in my May favorites video. I prefer playing with creams and textures and like brightness and glowiness to kind of reflect off of my skin rather than a ton of coverage. You do you, whatever you're happy with, do that. I'm still trying to just kind of get the hang of things when it comes to what I like wearing on my skin with the acne but for right now this is what i have been enjoying it's still simple it's still lightweight we're going into summer it's hot as hell down here in florida already i just have been focusing on keeping things light long wearing easy to use easy to apply and that's been the mo so let me go ahead and get started Okay, so the first thing that I have kind of changed up, not immensely, because even before I wasn't using a ton of heavy face lotions, I have been using either super lightweight moisturizers or honestly just like a hydration spray and not use a ton of really emollient creams because I think I just need to find my rhythm with the humidity and temperature down here also. The first product that I have been loving is the Auric Glow Lust Drops. These are from Samantha. Um, she has struggled with acne for years and so immediately when this started happening I kind of just trusted what she was telling me to use and the products she has created which is Auric. They have certainly not disappointed. So I've been taking pyrite and goldstone and mixing these together for my color. Pyrite just has more of like a olivey undertone and then goldstone gives me the depth and warmth. So that's the amount of product I have total. And then I just rub it between my fingers and then I go ahead and gently apply that. Um, and actually now that I have the product on, you can kind of see the texture of like active congestion or pimples versus what is slightly more pigmentation. So the reason why I love the Glow Lust, and if you love a really matte finish, this is not gonna be for you. The hydration and the way it mimics coverage with a slight tint and light really helps to, I feel, minimize the redness, minimize the look of the texture, um, and really cover up a lot of the acne without actually applying any coverage yet, which is cool. Plus another bonus is that this is also very long wearing and it fades really nicely as well. So going into summer with warmer temperatures or if you live somewhere that is warm year round, this is gonna be great because it's just gonna naturally fade through the day and it holds up pretty well with humidity and high heat. Sometimes I'll go in with citrine and get it between my fingers and then I like to just go over just the acne areas. The reason why I like to use citrine for this sometimes is that my hyperpigmentation because I have melanin is like a darker ready purple it almost is similar to darkness under the eyes kind of so i like to take something that's a little bit warmer with a more peachy orangey golden undertone and use it over those areas so it kind of combats some of the hyperpigmentation from the acne at this point if you're somebody that does not need a lot of coverage or does not care to have a lot of coverage you can stop here you can put face powder on if you want to mattify the skin a little bit otherwise just let it ride and you can be done i love the way the auric glow lust make the rest of your face look because it makes your skin just look so hydrated and healthy and glowy that i feel like it almost helps distract from whatever acne situation you have going on after auric i like to go in 
in with the Sephora brand Best Skin Ever Longwear Foundation Plus Anti-Pollution. This is a non-comedogenic foundation and it's incredibly lightweight, which is why I love it. Non-comedogenic products are what you wanna look for if you are having skin issues. And just generally speaking, they're good for you because they're less likely to irritate and clog up your skin. I like the way it feels. I like the coverage. It does reduce a little bit of the glow for me. And that's literally how much I go in with. So this is 33N. The shade range in this foundation is a little weird. I'm not going to lie. But I like to just take a little bit, dot it over the areas where my acne is the worst, and then just rub it in. So that's with literally not even half a pump of the foundation. And I, I mean... Rather than focusing on coverage, we're trying to play mind games, okay? So rather than just like caking on coverage and making myself feel more self-conscious because that's how I am, I'd rather be like, hey guys, yeah, I have acne. Okay, surprise, it's not that big of a deal. But also, look at the rest of my face, still looks popping. So that's just my MO here. So now I'm going in with the Clinique Even Better All Over Concealer Plus Eraser. It's allergy tested, 100% fragrance free, full coverage, natural finish. I love this concealer anyways for under my eyes, but it has been working really well for my face as well. And the Even Better line is kind of known for acne prone or irritated skin. So I just put a little bit on the back of my hand because we don't want cross contamination. And then I take my finger. You can do this any way that your heart desires, but honestly, more times than not, I'm just going in with my finger. I'm just slightly focusing coverage on it without focusing on coverage on my whole face. So it is gonna end up looking a little more natural. Now I'm going in with another Auric product and this is the same Glow Lust in the shade Axonite. I love using Axonite as a bronzer though, a cream bronzer. And again, we love the texture, we. By we, I hopefully mean you too, but I love the texture of the Auric Glow Lust drops because they're so flattering to the skin. So I'm just taking a Fenty 125 face brush. And again, in Florida with the heat, the humidity, and if I'm gonna be like out all day, I just wanna be able to feel comfortable knowing that my makeup doesn't look a mess when I already feel self-conscious about my acne. You know, the less I have to worry about, the better. So we're just adding the Axonite to my forehead. So before I use Axonite on my cheeks, I'm gonna go in and slightly gently dab out the concealer on my face. I like to let it sit for a second because I just wanna increase the coverage with minimal product in the best way possible, which is generally the rule of thumb for concealer. And before I blend that out, I'm actually gonna go back into the same concealer and just add a little bit here to brighten up the under eye area. And that should be good. So taking my finger, gently dabbing. You can use a beauty sponge for this part if you want. I'm gonna go over with a beauty sponge at one point or another. And also don't be freaked out that this is what your face looks like at this point. Again, we're working in really thin focus layers. We're just mimicking coverage. We're not actually throwing on a ton of coverage. We're mimicking it and we love it. So if you see me in real life, yeah, you can still see like a little couple spots. Even on the camera, I think you can probably still see some spots. You can still see some texture, but for me, this is great. This is perfect. I don't need a whole lot more texture coverage than this or pigment coverage than this. And so it serves its purpose. And this is a Sonia Kashuk um, sponge, by the way. It's damp and I'm just gonna like blend out my under eye concealer now and my forehead concealer. But one thing that has upset me probably more than anything else or has bothered me, like irritated me, is when people look at me like relatives, family, family. It'll be the closest ones to you. Look at me and they say, Oh my gosh, I've never seen your skin like this. And I'm like, I'm aware. Thank you so much. Pointing it out to me does does what exactly? Like, I don't look at you and be like, wow, I have never seen you look so busted before. Like, it just, it just grinds my gears. And it grinds my gears also because I have 
dealt with comments like that about my weight my entire life. So it's not like I'm not used to it, but I, my, I do feel really bad for people who aren't used to it, whether it's about weight or whether it's about skin. And especially with COVID and stuff, weight and skin have both been issues that I've been seeing across the board pop up for people. So for people, I know what it feels like to have people point stuff like that out. And so I commiserate deeply with anybody who has had people come and tell them like, oh my God, you've gained so much weight or oh my God, your skin's so bad. Or I don't know, maybe that's me just being extra aggressive. But I think for me, it's also, heightened because I have been working out and I have been like losing weight recently and getting into better shape and I'm doing it for myself but it's frustrating when like that's happening and people are like oh my god like you look great and that's that's great I'm so happy and I'm so appreciative that people want to like commend me for the hard work because I'm putting in a lot of hard work but then at the same time to be like oh my god I've never seen your skin like this like what happened I don't know I don't know what happened you tell me what happened like if anybody has ever felt like that about literally anything, just know you're not alone. <laughs> you know, next time you guys, if anybody here decides to point something out to someone about their physical appearance or something that's going on in their life, just think about it. Just think about it for a second, okay, before you say anything. So now I'm just taking a tiny bit of Axonite and bronzing up my cheek area. And I'm trying to be careful to not go over any areas where I had concealer. Like a little bit has come off there. Whatever. It's okay. Sometimes what I'll do is whatever bronzer is left on the back of my hand, I'll mix in the concealer with it so it deepens it up a little bit. And then just pop some over it so it's not super obvious of a color tone change. So now I'm taking the One Size Beauty Translucent Powder. This is in the lighter shade. It comes in two different shades. And I'm going in with an e.l.f. blush brush. This is what it looks like. It's just uh, tapered and can give you a little more precision. I use this for my under eyes all the time, but I am going to use this on my face as well a little bit just to set the areas categorically that I've concealed. What I like to do is get powder on the brush Blend out the under eye with your sponge to make sure everything is looking clean and not creased because if you set creases, you're setting creases. The reason why I like using a smaller brush and just taking my time and pressing the powder into the skin is because we've just spent so much time doing so much spot concealing and getting really precise with our coverage. If you take a bigger brush and you just swipe powder over your face, there's a chance that you're moving the coverage or wiping the coverage away and we wanna set it exactly where it is. So what I like to do, and I actually have more than one of these brushes, point in case there's like 30 of them laying around because they're so good. I will set my under eye with one. This powder is amazing. It does not crease. It wears so nicely through the day also, which I really love. Even in humidity, it tends to really hold its own, which I am so appreciative of. But I'm taking the other brush and I'm going to set my face where I have placed all the concealer. When you're doing this too, make sure that you remember which brush is going over acne, which brush is going over under eyes. And again, if it looks kind of crazy because you have a lot of powder everywhere or you can see it, don't worry about it. We will wipe it away. But it's better to like completely set everything and know that it's set and then wipe away after. So this is where we are now. I still have acne. I still have texture. And honestly, this is it for my base. I do finish out the rest of my makeup and I'll show you guys briefly what I'm using. But the rest of my makeup is really, really similar to the easy natural makeup tutorial that I did. I'll leave it linked up here for you guys. As far as the acne coverage and the effect that this makeup gives to my acne and skin, I'm very happy with it. I am okay with the texture and I'm okay with the pigmentation. You can still see a little bit of pigmentation and honestly a trick that I use pretty frequently before in videos when I had like a few active um, acne points, I would take an eyebrow pencil or a pen and just kind of dot it and then set it with powder a little bit and make it like a mole and I feel like it's a great way, great trick 
to cover up the random odd pimple that you feel like is just too much to be left uncovered. I'm gonna finish out my makeup, but I just wanted to show you. I'll show you one other product actually before I finish that has made such a huge difference. And it's the Dragon Beauty Forever Fantasy Setting Spray. I don't know what is in this. I'm like honestly kind of unsure about the uh, ingredients in here. But this stuff is potent, okay? This stuff keeps your makeup on all freaking day and it makes your skin look so hydrated and it helps my makeup all blend together really nicely but also keeps my spot concealing like in place all day and that's made a huge, huge, huge difference. So let me go ahead, finish up my makeup. You guys can watch and follow along and if you want something a little more detailed, go check out the soft makeup tutorial and I will be back shortly. One thing when you are putting on cheek products is you want to make sure that you are pressing it onto the skin rather than buffing it. Because again, you always, always want to maintain the integrity of your spot concealing and the coverage products underneath. And so just take a little bit at a time and just press it into the skin and stipple it almost to get the color payoff you want. You can really go into your neck, which is what I always do, to make sure that your makeup is looking like well blended out with the rest of your body. And then with the same bronzer, I'm going in with a Morphe E22 brush and just getting it all over my lids and blending it into my crease. are someone that has acne or has redness, don't be scared of blush. Use it to your advantage because the natural redness in your face, if it's there, don't fight it, embrace it. Most times it'll work out to your benefit. So just keep that in mind. I'm going in with the Vive Essentials Matte Eyeshadow Palette and a Morphe M709. I'm going into Lava Rock. That's the entire face. I just have to do mascara, but before I do mascara, I always like to spray my face because otherwise mascara gets everywhere. My eyelashes are pretty long, thanks to Grande Lash, not sponsored, but legitimately. I like to use a headband. You can literally use anything. And if my hair is done, I will just put this like this and hold on to it and then spray my face so that this doesn't get all over my hair because it is pretty potent and it does tend to make my hair a little sticky if I get too much of it in my hair. I take my sponge and just really lightly press it in because what I've noticed is sometimes it leaves little like droplets. It really bothers me, but I'll just take the edge of my sponge and get my like lids, get my brows, make sure everything is set. And I love what it does to my skin. Like it doesn't necessarily make my skin a lot dewier, but it definitely like gives it a really pretty radiance and just melts everything together really nicely. Love that spray. Now I'm gonna just finish up with my mascara. I'm gonna go in with my Surratt Lash Curler, my Grande Primer, and my Ma Marc Jacobs At Lash Mascara, and that's pretty much it. You can use false lashes if you want, I'm good. You don't need to curl your lashes. I just started curling them, um, and I feel like it makes a little bit of a difference, so I've been into it. So we're just gonna wrap that up, and we will be done pretty much. So I like to let my mascara dry for a second 
before I go in with another coat, my mouth is making a lot of weird sounds. <laughs> I'm just wiping away some of the lip balm that I had on and I'm gonna go in with my lip product. So I'm gonna go in with a little bit of KKW Nude 2.5 on the lips, just like on the edges to line it a little, definition. And then I'm going in with I think Tower 28 Almond. This is the High Shine Shine On Jelly Lip Gloss. Do we like that? Or is it too brown? I think it might be too brown. So I'm gonna dab it off. Not all of it though. A little bit is fine. Okay, so I think I'm actually gonna try putting on a little bit of this. This is the Bare Minerals Mineralist Lip Gloss Balm in Imagination. I just got this. And now I'm gonna go back into my mascara, add another coat to both lashes and, uh, both lashes, both eyes, and I will be right back. I am also gonna tight line my upper lash line with the Makeup by Mario Super Black Eyeliner as well. And this here is the finished look. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you try out any of the products or techniques that I used in this video, leave a comment down below for me and let me know what you thought about them. This is also just keep in mind what I've been doing recently. You can totally customize the eye makeup, make it more dramatic, add some false lashes, make it a little more glam. Really, I wanted the focus of this video to be how I've been doing my face and the coverage side of it because it's just been my favorite way thus far. I know that it's going to give me longevity. It's gonna last through heat and humidity. And as it wears off, it's gonna do so really naturally. So it's not going to emphasize any of my texture. Um, it's not gonna look cakey or like I'm wearing just a ton of makeup that is like melting off of my face, but it still looks like skin. You can still see that I have some texture, some acne, but it gives me enough coverage or it minimizes the appearance of my acne enough to the point where I still feel comfortable, I feel confident, and I like the way my makeup looks. And again, life is too short to have something like this bog you down. So leave a comment down below for me and let me know what you guys thought. And also, if any of you have any suggestions, whether it's product or lifestyle changes, please leave those in the comments as well. Any help, any suggestions would be much appreciated. But until my next video, thank you as always so much for tuning in, guys, and I'll catch you soon. Bye.